Hello everybody and welcome back to some more BD Army. Today we're taking a look at VTOLs, Vertical Takeoff and Landing Craft, and who knows, maybe a, a Stovall or a Stoll in there as well. Um, but uh, here I have one of my Cyclones and I'm trying to recreate uh, an early experiment I did in, um, in KSP with fighters ages and ages ago now. Years lost in the mist of time, but if my calculations are correct, then... Hmm. Back in a second. Okay, so I kept putting a bunch more Separatrons on the uh, aircraft and was wondering why it wasn't doing anything, but then I noticed the staging was wrong. They were going into this uh, this second stage here, so now I've, I've put them all into this first stage and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. Okay, that was quite spectacular, but not really what we're after. Uh, bear with me a moment. Right, I think I've managed to iron the kinks out. What I was trying to do was this. There we go, just uh, stow the landing gear. So yes, VTOLs, very handy when you've got limited space. Um, to take off from or land in. I'm just going to fly this around a bit because I do like flying this aircraft around. But uh, this very much a one-use approach. Let's um, let's go and look at something a bit more reusable. So this is a bit more like it. Now most people when they start doing some early experiment experimentation with VTOLs in, uh, in KSP they normally start with something like this. Just strapping a couple of good old-fashioned jet engines to the bottom of your aircraft and um, using that as a VTOL engine. Let's get these engines going. Let's turn on afterburners and I found some hotkeys so I can turn off the main rear engines. Yep, and then just throttle up. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Maybe a bit more to get us into the air. Lovely stuff. Turn on those main engines again. And off we go. Let's get those uh, let's get that gear up. And then when we when we reach a decent speed, we just turn off those lifting engines. And we're away. As I said, that's more like it. Obviously, it does look a little bit crude. Uh, I tried to get the um, engines as far into the fuselage as I could, but you can already see the structural parts they're attached to already starting to poke through the top. And I didn't want to make it look too ugly. Um, come to think of it, actually, those lifting engines do basically add a lifting force. I wonder if I was to just to... Nope, wrong ones. If I was to turn them on, if they would actually improve the turning performance of this aircraft. Hey, not bad. Oh, I flipped out. Oh, and they've... Oh, dear. Flawless. Yeah, let's... um. Let's go and look at something a bit more purpose-built. So this is what I've thrown together for our fun and games today. This is the Stormhawk. It's a VTOL aircraft, and um, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have already noticed some design similarities, particularly towards the back end with the F-35, and that's not entirely accidental. Um, no, I mean, if you look at it, the overall design and the look of it, it's got... It's got some similarities with both the F-35 and the Harrier. Some of the most iconic VTOL or Stovall, if they've got any kind of load on them, aircraft that uh, that have ever been produced. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to be our workhorse for today. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's stop looking and start flying. So I took the Stormhawk up for a test flight, and um, yeah, a very manoeuvrable craft. It's not quite got the oomph that uh, some of my other two engine fighters have. This has just got the one after-burning engine and uh, another one that will um, 
we'll discuss in a little bit, but still a very manoeuvrable craft. I actually had to turn down the control authority on the tailplane to stop it from turning too hard and just spiralling out of control. But anyway, you don't build a VTOL just to watch it fly conventionally. No, 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 no. You build a VTOL to watch it do this. So we are back here on the runway and we're going to take a, a bit of a closer look at this uh, Stormhawk uh, with uh, particular regards to the engines. The additional engines I'm using here, by the way, are all from the uh, Mark II expansion mod. I'll put a link to that in the description. But uh, let's start at the back here. You can see we've got our standard uh, Panther after burning engine there. And just in front of it, we have this Sidley VTOL engine. Now, this is sort of um, in the Harrier vein of engines. Let's get the engines going, actually. So if I press the right hotkey, you can see the engines go from pointing backwards to pointing downwards. Very much in a, in a Harrier style. The other engine I have is this one here, the uh, Pegasus VTOL engine, and that's just a straightforward downward pointing engine, which I can turn on and off with the right hotkey. Now I think I've got this all balanced, so if I turn the main engine off, get the um, rear VTOL engine pointing downwards, Oop. that was already on, and if we slowly increase the thrust, There we go. To about there, and once those engines get up to uh, thrust... Nope, going to take a little more. There we go. And so if we want to now, we can just turn that main engine back on. Let's just kick in the afterburners, raise the landing gear. And then once we get to about, I don't know, about 80 meters per second, we can just turn off those other two engines, well, turn off the lifting engine, swivel the Sidley engine back to its normal position, and there we go. We have a flying craft, but uh, can we land it in a similar fashion? I'm not going to try landing it on the helipad on top of the, uh, on top of the uh, VAB. This is still a little, a little difficult to control. It requires a little bit more balancing, so I'll just see if I can land it back here on the runway. Okay, coming in here, dropping our speed. Let's put the flaps down. Let's kill that main engine. In fact, what I'm going to do is start throttling up those lifting engines. Probably want some gear as well, won't we? Pull right back. There we go. And once we've killed our speed sufficiently... Oh, more power, more power. Oh! Oh, nuts! Okay, not the smoothest landing I've ever done, but we got there. We got down and in one piece as well, so uh, I'm going to call that a win. Anyway, let's um, let's go and see what this thing's like in combat. So I've set up a simple scenario here. Um, oh, a lot of S's in that. Um, I am going to put one of my Stormhawks against one of my Cyclones over here. The Cyclone will be AI controlled and in a bit of a channel first... I'm going to try and control the Stormhawk and see if I can kill the Cyclone. Uh, I have placed the Stormhawk on top of the VAB, uh, which I did cheating. I used Vessel Mover for that. Uh, but I'm going to take this off as a VTOL and see if I can get this up and flying and turned around and um, ready to fight before this Cyclone comes round and bears down upon me. So I will want to get engines on, engines on. Are we ready? So, the moment I press this, the Cyclone should start taking off. There he goes. So I want to turn off my main engine. Uh, nozzles down, stability assist on, start throttling up. Okay, main engine on, afterburners. I'm going to want uh, radome. 
Oh, crap. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a bit of a head start this time. Let's uh, let's uh, start taking off, and then I'll turn the cyclone on. So, everything already in place should st turn stability assist on. Start throttling all the way up. There we go. Main engines on, afterburners, and now I will get the cyclone going. Let's get gear up. There goes the cyclone. Let's turn off the lifting engines and see if we can come about and deliver some death onto our little friend here. Trigger should be armed. Come on. Oh! Hmm. Tell you what, let's just let the AI do it. So to close out today's video, we're just going to do a standard BD Armoury competition, a three-on-three. Three. I have lined up three of these Stormhawks, we're just going to use them as conventional fighters for this one. And they are going to be going up against my Panthers. Now this is going to be an interesting one because I think the Stormhawks are the more manoeuvrable of the two, but the Panthers are by far and away the more powerful with the, uh, just with two of those after burning engines, and I think the lighter craft as well against this sort of, well I suppose you could call it one and a half arrangement that the, uh, the Stormhawks have, so uh, let's get them into the air. Yeah, the Panther's much quicker off the mark there, this is going to be an interesting fight. Um, but yeah, there's a reason I don't normally control these fighters myself when we're doing a dogfight. I think at some point I'll kind of have to like set up a, a reasonable scenario and just control one of the one of the fighters myself because uh, I just I just should really. Anyway, how are we doing? Those panthers, oh my word, those are up and away already. Um, yeah, much more powerful. That might prove a problem for the Stormhawks because they'll also be able, the panthers will also be able to put a fair amount of distance between them and the Stormhawks if there's any if there's ever a chase on. But uh let's not let's not dismiss the Stormhawks so easily. In a close in a close dogfight scenario, I think they do have the edge on the maneuverability. Anyway, we're uh, We're at the prerequisite distance and our fighters turn to loose their first volley of missiles. Helric Kerman here launches her first missile, an Amram, and then before long, everyone should start breaking low to dodge the incoming missiles. I'm not too worried about the missiles in the Stormhawks, or not really in the Panthers either. They can just get up such a lick of speed that. Oh! Oh, Helric's craft gets scorched. I can't see anything major that was lost. No, it seems to be alright. It did appear like something exploded there, though. Anyway, the second volley of missiles incoming. Helric managed to manages to avoid those two without much problem. And we really are closing the distance to gun range now. Jebediah Kerman loses another missile, popping chaff all over the place to avoid the one that's incoming. And Sheptus Kerman doing likewise. We are being very slow to close this gap here. Missile tennis going on for a while. How are the Panthers doing? Deptree Kerman. Really closing some of that distance now. Popping a bit of... Popping some countermeasures himself. And we have gunfire. Ribbly Kerman is able to bring her guns to bear on that Stormhawk, but now she needs to... Oh! And that's one of the Stormhawks. That must have been a missile kill. It is Advantage Panthers. Oh! And Sheptus Kerman manages to avoid a missile. But Jebediah is in the thick of it. There's a joust going on. Oh! And Jebediah gets a little scorched, loses some control surfaces, loses some wing. 
that's going to make that very difficult to control. More gunfire incoming. I think it's only a matter of time for Jebediah now. I think he's got the attention of two Panthers. One goes screaming past. The advantage of power, sometimes you can have a little too much. But it looks to be a watery end for Jebediah unless, unless he can turn it around. Oh, just manages to avoid crashing into the ocean. Sheptus Kerman coming in, trying to salvage some pride for the for the Stormhawks. Can she get a quick revenge kill here? If she can, then that kind of might turn the whole fight on its... Well, not really. It's effectively three against one. I think we know who the victors are here. Oh, and Jebediah finally succumbs to his um, uncontrollable craft. Oh. That was that was a missile. Doesn't appear to have done any major damage, despite the proximity of its. Ah, oh, there we go, though. That's the fight over. Sheptus Kerman crashing to the ground, and just because she's not in her own shirt, that doesn't mean we won't try and be nice. So yes, victory for the Panthers. Um, yeah, that's the problem with VTOLs. What you um, what you gain in the uh, gain in utility, you sort of lose in other areas, and we really saw that today. Uh, power versus maneuverability. Power won that hands down. But uh, that's the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.